G'day everyone, I recently asked you guys what concept you struggle most with in Hearts of Iron 4 and the results were overwhelmingly the navy. Ah, uh, look at this, so close to the magic number. So today I'm going to show you a way that you can basically automate the management of your navy and it's with a feature that's been right under your nose this whole time. Now firstly, if you're brand spanking new to Hearts of Iron 4, I'd recommend to check out my navy guide and if you're here for the naval designer, I've also got a video on that too, so I'll link both of them in the description. We won't really be covering those today, it's going to be more about this real world application that you can use in your games. Now, it does take a small amount of time to set up at the start of your games, so are you willing to commit to that for me? Like, please just trust me, it'll make your life a whole lot easier and it'll make using the Navy way more enjoyable. So what I'm gonna show you today is the task force editor feature, which you can kind of think about as the division designer of the sea. Functionally, it's gonna allow you to have your ships that you're building automatically join fleets, and not only that, but specific ships will join specific fleets all on their own. You won't have to touch it. To show you how to set this up, let's go to the naval powerhouse of the world, Ireland. Nah, I'm joking, of course it's the UK. Now, early game, I always recommend sorting out your subs from your surface fleet. It's never really worth having both types of ships in the same task forces. Your subs are so slow, they're gonna limit your big boats quite a bit. So just merge them all together by clicking on these anchors here, and then right clicking on the bottom part, which is the reserve fleet. And then you can click on this round blue button to select them all and then press G or these little arrows pointing inwards, you know, they're like it for me. Then we'll just five speed for a second and all of the boats will come together. So at this point, all of your ships are coming from all over the world to one place. Uh, that way it's just a lot easier to manage. If you assign this fleet to an Admiral as well, you can actually see here 237 is the amount of boats that should be in that task force. So then you can tell once those numbers match, then they're all here. Now we can separate out all of our submarines. Just make sure we've got them all, yep. So just put them into their own task force, their own Admiral, and pop them into a new theater as well. Now it's worth renaming these as well uh, to British subs and British surface fleet, or you can just remember that number one is your surface fleet and number two is for your subs. Now this is where we start to automate things. So assign an Admiral, it doesn't matter who, to this one, and you can see that the amount of task forces that they can command is 10. So what you're gonna wanna do is split these subs up into 10 task forces like this. Now, just select the first one, and you're gonna click on this button here, which is the task force composition editor. It's gonna open up this panel here for you. What you're looking at here is your new best friend. It's easiest to demonstrate with subs, but we are gonna use this to automate so many of our different fleets that we have for any kind of role that you want. Now, you can see the line here for submarines. So go ahead and just increase the capacity here or this button up to 25. So this basically means that any subs that have the skull icon in their design, they'll any subs that get assigned to our reserves will automatically reinforce this task force up to the cap of 25, which we've put here. Now, you can go through and do the same thing for all your other nine task forces, but rather than doing that again manually, we are going to save a template. So just go ahead and give it a name in this section and then click on the save icon. Now you can see that on the drop down arrow, there is the sub template. Now what we can do is go through and select the rest of the task forces, click the drop down arrow, select the template and then hit enter. And we'll just go through and do the same for all of them. And that's like the easiest way to do that design. If anyone knows of an easy way to do that, let me know, I've not found it yet. Another thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is to select your entire fleet and then click on this button here, which is the automatic split off. So basically what this means is once a ship gets damaged, it will return to the port and do its own repair rather than bringing back all 25 boats in that task force. Now, just to demonstrate how this works, you can see here that we've got a few submarines in our reserve area of our theater. Now, if we go ahead and unpause, they'll automatically fill into the groups as needed. They usually fill from the left one across. You can now go ahead and assign your submarines to whatever sea regions on whatever mission that you want. And as long as you've got the production and the design icon is the same as what's in your template, you'll never have to worry about reinforcing these sneaky boys ever again. Uh, and unless they all get sunk, in which case you'll need to make a new task force with the same template. But yeah, you get the idea. The reason that the icon is important is that if it doesn't match, it won't reinforce the group like we want, but it does allow you to have different designs of the same ship type for different roles. So for example, if you hate your friends and you wanna crash your multiplayer game, you might wanna have some mine laying subs. So you go ahead and you make the design and you give it the mine laying icon. 
So now when we want to make a task force using these ships, you go ahead and you do the same thing. But what you do is you make sure that the type of submarine that's assigned here is the one with the mine laying icon. Now you can see if we go ahead and assign those ships to our reserves, they'll automatically fill into the correct task forces. Now, you might look at me and think that in all of the Navy, the subs are the easy part. And you're right, but this also works on your big fleet too. The meta is to just dump all of your ships into one big death stack and <laughs> have them go around just destroying everything. But for the sake of not doing that and covering more regions, I like to keep them in task forces of around 50 or so. So let's go ahead and split this one into four. Now, these will come out as roughly even in terms of capital ships and screens and stuff like that. Just so you know, when I play the UK, I'll usually have one fleet covering the Channel and the North Sea, one in Malta, one in Alexandria, and then I'll have the other one to just support naval invasions or cover off any extra sea zones where the enemy's trying to contest me. Hopefully, you're all familiar with screens and capital ships and the golden rule of a four to one ratio. So with that in mind, there's pretty much only two types of destroyers that you'll ever want to make. Useful ones and shields. So your useful ones can be anti-sub warfare destroyers or have torpedo tubes and a bit of soft attack. They can lay mines, clear mines, whatever. What you're going to want to do though is have a separate template, which is the shield. They're simply the cheapest screening ship you can to protect your big boats. That ship is going to look like this, and it's just going to have the cheapest gun and engine on the early hull, and that's pretty much the lowest production cost that you're going to get. Like, these ships are going to be getting sunk anyway, so why waste your production on something that's not going to get you any returns? Now, if we jump back into the task force editor again, this time we aren't going to be using the same template for each fleet as there's different battleships, cruisers, etc. It's not going to be even. All you need to do is increase the destroyer line to be whatever number of your capital ships is times four. Yes, you'll have to do some quick maths. You can use a calculator if you want. It's always a good idea to have a couple of extra on hand for extra measure as well. It's always good to have a couple of extra for extra measure, whatever. If you're going to be building carriers, you can also increase this line up to a maximum of four as well. But yeah, the main thing is to just increase your screens until you have enough coverage for all your capital ships. Now, you'll also need to go through and do this for all of your other task forces as well. Again, it does take a little bit of time. I understand that, but trust me, it's worth it. A small time investment at the start of the game will pay off in the long run. Another common use for this sort of setup would be if you want to have like a ASW or anti-sub warfare fleet. So the designs look something like this. You just want to have the depth charges on your destroyer and then a spotting cruiser, which just has as many plane catapults, sonar and radar as you can fit on there and not much else. I like to use the goggles icon for my spotting cruisers. Oh, and I've also got the skull icon for the destroyers just so it's different to the uh, shield. The way I like to organize them is to have 10 spotting cruisers in one fleet like this, and you just split them up into 10 task forces of one cruiser each. So there's just a single, a single ship in there. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll put them in a sea region where I'm getting convoy raided. You just activate them and put them on patrol. And then separately, you'll have your ASW destroyer task force, and you'll just have them set to the same sea region. Oh my goodness on the strike force mission. Basically what will happen is your despotting cruisers will find the enemy fleet and then your destroyers will come out of the port to destroy the boats. Uh, this works really well against both AI and humans. Although if you are playing against human beings, you might have to chase their subs around the sea a little bit. You can set the size of your destroyer fleet to anywhere from sort of 30 to 40 or even 20 to 40. In my experience, the bigger is better in terms of the amount of kills that you would get. Uh, again, you can just set up a template, the ASW one, and then they'll recover their losses and reinforce completely on their own. So you've got your pile sorted out that your ships are going to be sorted into. There's just one last bit of direction that you need to help them on their way. So jump into your production menu and then you are going to want to go to this section here on each production line. Rather than auto deploying them, you want to set them to deploy to the specific fleet, which they're going to be reinforcing. So for your submarines, it's going to be obviously British subs. Uh, for the shield, it's going to be our surface fleet. And then for our ASW ships, it's going to be the ASW theater. Now, you can obviously have all of your fleets in the one theater if you want, if you're chaotic and insane, but I like to split it up to make it nice and easy to organize. If you don't take this step, then the boats are just going to sit in the reserve 
part of the theater and not actually reinforce. If that does happen though, you can simply just select those ships and then right click onto the reserve theater of the correct one that you want them to go into and then they'll automatically reinforce themselves and problem solved. And there you have it. At the cost of maybe two to three minutes of your time at the start of a game, you've made life so much easier for yourself. You can now just go through and set up your production lines without having to worry if you've got enough screens or if you have the wrong ships and the wrong fleet. It's all sorted, baby. Not only that, as you upgrade your ships, getting new hulls and modules, as long as the icon and the ship class is the same, they'll still reinforce with the newer designs. It's literally that easy. Now, I do also want to give you some tips on how to actually use your Navy, because I feel like a lot of people do struggle with that. Now, the best use for your submarines, of course, is convoy raiding. So basically, just have a look at where your enemies are. Like Germany, where can they trade resources from? Well, we control Gibraltar and the Suez, so it's got to come from out here. So that's where we're going to cover off so they can't possibly trade any resources in or move any troops out. So that's basically the idea. The convoy raiding mission is the best one to put them on. Strike force isn't really that effective as your subs are kind of too slow to intercept most ships anyway. Now, for your main fleet, your carriers and battleships, the first thing that you're going to want to do is open up any fleets that have carriers and click on this icon here. That is going to open up the like the plane part. That's how you manage the wings on your aircraft carriers. So I'd recommend a ratio of sort of 60 to 80% naval bombers and the rest fighters. So these planes are researched as a variant of your normal small planes if you don't have the DLC. Or if you do have the DLC, then they basically just unlock an extra variant whenever you do whichever small airframe tech. These planes also automatically join a naval battle, what, whatever naval battle that your carriers get into. So you don't actually need to set their mission or anything. Just keep an eye on their experience level here. If you want to exercise them, you're going to have to do it at the same time as the main fleet is. So just keep that in mind. Also, the easiest way I found to move wings around is just to split the ones that are already existing on your boats like this, and they'll automatically reinforce once you get your numbers and everything right. Uh, you can even move wings between ships too, so just like that. The best mission for these larger fleets is Strike Force. They use a heap of fuel if they're active out in the sea. Like basically if they're not in port, they're going to be using up a bunch of fuel and they are vulnerable to naval bombers. So having them only leave port when they actually need to fight an enemy is both safer and cheaper. So to help them find these enemy boats though, you're going to need some spotting cruisers as well on the patrol mission in whatever sea region that your fleet is on strike force in. So for example, we'll set these fleet, we'll set this fleet in the channel. We'll select our aircraft carrier task force, put them on strike force and then our spotting cruisers will be on patrol i've even set them their own little task force template just so they can also automatically reinforce if they take any losses so basically once your cruiser spots an enemy fleet your big boys will sail out to meet them you can also use these fleets on the naval invasion support mission of course to provide shore bombardment to your naval invasions but did you know that they actually do this for any battles happening on coastal tiles around that sea region so as the british if you're trying to hold el alamein uh you're defending against the italians and you need that little bit extra oomph you can put your fleet on this mission and they'll just move to one of the adjacent sea tiles and provide some naval bombardments now, there is another concept which I cover in my video on how to play the UK, and it's how you can actually refit ships to make yourself pretty much invincible to air attack. I'll link that below with the other videos I mentioned for you if you wanted to check that out. All right, that's probably enough for today. There's a lot more you can do with the Navy, of course, but for now, that should get you going well on your way. So let me know if you learned something. If it was, why not show a friend who splish splashes around with their Navy just being unhelpful? Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.